Hey guys, what's happening? So, just got this new uh, Mop 3 controller in the uh, from Amazon. It's 133 bucks, but it's the uh, Digital Dream EC 300, and I think it's still made by Novasen. It's kind of hard to get the details on that, but Novasen was the originator of this product. But it looks pretty awesome. Um, this should only be three axis. Um, I do actually need a five axis card. And um, I'm currently printing out some DIN rails for right now, some DIN mounts uh, to go on my uh, CNC machine back here. This is the one it's going to go on to. And originally I had one of the, um, I was trying to buy the EC500, the more powerful one of this. So it's actually was even cheaper from AliExpress. And I guess they were out of it. You know, they were, still, they were selling it and I had paid three different people to buy it. And they couldn't get it and they had to give me a refund. So I finally broke down and got the three access card. Um, just to play with this until I can get the EC500. But they actually look exactly the same, uh, except the EC500. Um, the EC500 actually has a, a faster processor. It can pulse at a 400 megahertz or 400 kilohertz versus uh, 300 kilohertz. So I'm thinking they either have a, a faster ARM processor in there, but I'm going to take it apart and I'll show you the insides of this. And also it has a, a, a UART, serial UART port. But uh, let me compare this with the first version. So I'm already kind of familiar with these Novasun cards and uh, Linux CNC. And that's one of the cool things is there's actually a Linux CNC project for this card or this series of cards, uh, the Ethernet based uh, Novasun cards. Um, so the only difference between, I mean, you, I mean, there's a lot of these little USB Mach 3 cards on the internet, and they're all kind of the same. They all have the 32 bit ARM processor that converts the signals to this, but this was the first version of this card. Um, and I've actually got this to work with Linux CNC, but it's a 32-bit ARM processor. Um, and actually, I've, I've identified this as being the uh, Flash or the uh, EEPROM, which I think pulls the license information, the access count, and the uh, serial number stored on here, because I've actually flashed this card numerous times. All right, sidetracked. All right. Um, all right. So I'm going to take the bottom off. We're going to look at the PCB and see what it looks like. Compares. But I know this one is a little bit more difficult to take apart. Uh, but I'm actually going to be looking for a uh, port, uh, a uh, ST-Link port, so I can actually flash the firmware. Uh, because, like I said, eventually I'll be doing Linux CNC with this. But I do actually have a, I've actually made another video about it. Um, I do actually have a, the NVMPG. And uh, so right, let me get my screwdriver out and get the cover apart. Yeah, this new one has a lot more involved taking it apart. You have to take the back cover off. Uh, most likely you're going to have to take off these standoffs. Remove all these off here, and then also um, you're gonna probably have to remove these too. The your the MPG. So maybe I'll see how I'll fire it up first and see if it works before I get too involved. All right. So the reason why I actually bought this card over like a smooth stepper, Ethernet smooth stepper, is there's actually a Linux CNC product for it. So that kind of you know kind of sparked my interest. But also had that really cool, the uh, Novasun, the uh, NVMPG, and I'll show you that in a second. Uh, which is a really nice color uh, MPG. I don't really like the wireless MPGs because I, I hear that they're, uh, you know, they can't, they can, they can be inaccurate. Uh, plus I need a 5-axis because I'm doing, I'm, I'm doing a 5-axis machine. I already have the 5 drivers in there. Um, even though this is 3-axis, once I, with, with Linux CNC, you know, once you program that, it's, it, you get all, you get the full access count. So the way Novasun does it is they restrict it in the EEPROM. So this little chip right here is actually, this, this processor, the STM Micro 32-bit ARM processor, pulls the information from this EEPROM. And this basically says, what does the access, access? So they've already soldered all the, the stuff on there. And the only thing that limits it is this EEPROM, the, the file. So I might try to hack that EEPROM. Um, but... Um, that's how it actually gets the access count. So it's already wired and, I don't know, it, it's ready to go for 6-axis or 5-axis, whatever you have. And they just limit it in software. Alright, so, um, yeah, I definitely like the construction of it. It's full metal. You know, it's, a, it's like a, they, you know, they've changed the quality of this whole thing altogether. We're talking bigger connectors. I mean, but everything like, should be exactly the same. The software is exactly the same. It's just a much better build quality. Um, so that's, that's pretty cool. 
Um, all right, let me get the SIG fired up, 24 volts. Um, I already know how to configure the Ethernet because it's exactly the same as this one. Um, so I'm taking that off and I'm just going to have a grab my network cable and I'll show you that you have to statically assign the IP address of the computer to 192.168.1.10. Alright, so one of the cool things that's actually on this new board is that actually they did full pin out for the, uh, the positive and the negative. So the pulse negative positive uh, and, the, and the direction negative positive. Whereas on the other card, uh, you have to, like on this one, I have to combine the uh, positive signal on this wire like that. So now I can separate them, have them individual. Alright, so here is the MVPG. So I'm going to see the little switch right there. Standard MPG, MV MPG. Alright, All right, so here is a uh, Cat8 shielded cable. It's funny, I'm actually a cabling contractor and I actually haven't run Cat8 in the building. I'm still at Cat6, maybe Cat7 if you're lucky. I'm actually even getting out of that whole cable contracting thing. It's too much of a headache in California construction. Um, Alright. Alright, give us some power. Alright, get some power. 24 volt on the uh, power supply. I already have the static IP configured. I even have the driver because I was already messing with it. The digital dream um, thing here. Alright, so I got my driver connected. NEMA 17 with a tester. Okay, I got power. It's, it's locked in place. Alright, we'll fire up Mach 3 here. Um, we'll choose the digital dream. 3.0. Um, stop. Okay, like I said, these are pretty much um, exactly the same. Connection, okay, let's go to plug-in, see if we're communicating with it. Plug-in, configure plug-in, digital dream. Ah! Wait on a second, it says NVM, oh, configure for 5 access. Ah! That's... I thought it would say it was uh, licensed for 3. Huh. That's... Like when I bought it on Amazon, I'll put the link down below. But it was supposed to be for three. From what I'm looking at is right here. Uh, and that's actually what I need because I have five axes. I have five drivers and, and a, uh, a spindle. Well, it really, in theory, this is six axis. Because the spindle can be an axis. You know, so if I wanted like, like an AC servo with a spindle, which I might eventually do, um, I can use that. But maybe they're separating that. I'm not sure how they're... That is awesome, awesome, awesome. So before I mount it, uh, I created these uh, DIN rails in Fusion 360. And I want me to mount it in my DIN rail down below. Uh, so I have uh, air pump and coolant. It did come with these breakouts. I'm not going to use this one because I've already created my own um, custom uh, MPG mount. And also this goes through here. The DB15 or some feeds back to here. So that gives me that. Um, but for the output, I have a, my spindle. I have basically, I only have, I don't have a reverse. So I have a solid state relay for my 220 spindle, the, uh, the motor that controls. I really just have on and off, and my RPM is controlled by belt pulleys. Like I said, eventually that's going to change. I'm going to have a, you know, an AC servo. But I'm going to have to fish uh, my coolant pump. I have two outputs for two salt state relays um, for um, a coolant pump, my air pump, and then uh, I'm going to have like a, a mist, like a, what's it called, like a fog buster type setup. All right, I've been actually kind of dealing with a headache on these controllers for a while. I've actually made a lot of videos about these Mach 3 controllers. So I'm hoping this one is, uh, is the one. Um, like I said, it, it's cool because you have that, that Linux CNC element to it if you want to go to it, you know? Alright, so with most of these, not all Nova Sun products, but the USB version's not the same. But the COM plus and the COM minus, so that is here. All these, all the, uh, opto-isolated inputs aren't going to get, even though it says ground, you're not actually grounded to your ground here, to your power ground. So you'd have to run a jumper from here to the ground, uh, to get actually ground out. 
uh, like, let's say if I wanted to activate like a thing output, like a, I wanted to activate a relay, it's a, typically an open collector. So you have to run a ground to the ground and then hook up in a positive input. I think I made a video about that. But, um, yeah, index, that's cool. It has an index. So spindle index, RPM index, which I might put on the machine. Um, because it would be nice to know the actual real spindle speed. Not difficult. I did it on my CNC lathe. Um, Alright, so I had to run a jumper from the com to the ground. So I'm actually trying to get my little center going right now. And, uh, yeah, these are normally closed. So it's one is e-stop, one is a sensor, and one is the over-travel. Uh, I kept to the e-stop. So, yeah, I have to run a jumper, ground jumper. Alright, there we go. It's funny how my YouTube channel started. Um, I originally had, uh, I started making, like, industry-related videos for, like, my, I, I installed phone systems for many, many years. And I started making phone repair videos to make my website rank better, my business website. And that's kind of how I got into YouTube. <laughs> All right. Um, all right. So now I got a ground power back on. I think I definitely improved the manual. Uh, so I looked at more at their diagram of the input circuit, and you do need the com plus and the com the com negative. Um, so I need to I run a jumper from the positive side to the negative side. I mean, this the problem is you're not isolating the power. So ideally, you'd want to make a second power supply. You know that was actually feeding this the separate thing here. Um, that way you're kind of like uh, preventing that. You don't want the, the, the leak over, the uh, interference. But let me show you this now with the probe. So barely touching it is probe in right there. See that probe in? If I go, if I go too far, then it goes east stop. So watch. So probe in, barely touch. That's the probe, the bit coming down. And then east stop. If it goes too far, that's over travel. Alright, so those are the inputs. So it's the same thing now with the, uh, you know, uh, like, like a limit switch, it'd be the exact same thing. So I'm going to put my limit switch, my home switches on uh, uh, input three. The cool thing is there's a com negative right there. So uh, they did actually think this this board is better thought out, I think. You know, it's not, they have everything in the right spot. So, um, you know, com positive over here, com negative. So if I can do a, uh, What's it called? I can like directly wire my uh, solid state relays. Um, so that, yeah, I think it's 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 better. All right, so I think I'm ready to put this back in the cabinet now. So the main thing is I wanted to make sure I figured out everything up here, you know, versus actually in in a hard to read spot. So I got to make sure I have it all planned out in my head, figure out what I'm doing with the wiring, know exactly how it works, and then when I have this in a weird spot, I don't have to be down there very long. All right, guys, I think I found a winner here. So the EC300 is the best one so far. Um, all right, so let me show you what's up. Um, yeah, it fits in there. I, I created designed some uh, DIN mount rails. And I uh, still got to clamp the wiring, but I want to make sure everything works perfectly. My extension cable come, comes from, or right there, this gray thing is my extension cable to my uh, MPG. Let me show you here, so MPG. All right, I don't think you've seen this in my videos. I'm, I'm doing those here. Alright, that's all right, that's Z. That's Y. Alright. Let's see. The Z. Alright, scroll down to remember I told you I'm, I'm gonna actually design a uh, five axis uh, trunnion for this thing. So that is my fourth axis. And this is my B axis, which is my fifth axis. All right, $133 on Amazon. Put a link down below. Um, all right, so I'm actually I'm going to run some G code. I'm th actually, I haven't even run the CNC yet. I haven't, I haven't run a program on it yet. Just because I couldn't find a control board that was, that everything worked, you know? Like the, the problem with the USB ones um, was it would, like as soon as I fired on and I apply five volts because it was connected to the USB. It would activate my solid state relays and then uh, it would uh, you know turn my spindle on. So yeah, let me show you my air pump. Got my coolant here. Where is it? Coolant here. So this would activate the solid state relay. And the pump will be hooked up to my wire, my air, air hose up here. And 
That's that. And then uh, spindle. <laughs> So I'm actually I'm gonna zero this out. Um, then I'm actually gonna run a circular piece of G code, but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna cut anything. I'm just gonna do like an error. So I'm I'm just gonna zero it like the, the Z up up high. So right, and that first piece of G code on this machine, um, you know, fully working, operational, all homing, everything's working. Um, if you're not if you haven't seen this yet, I'm not, well I haven't shown you like the finished process of me building thing yet, but. All the end steps, X1 or is X. I'll need me 24. All right, so, um, all right, so this is a circular pattern, 100 millimeter circular, a circle, 10 millimeters deep. Um, I don't even know what's gonna have it right now because I've never run anything on this machine. All right, so I forgot to show the first start up, but as you can see, it's it's moving at X. Yeah, I should bring up the feed right here. Oh, I guess I have to mention the science more. 450 is the most I can make it. If I wanted, I could turn the spin while I'm cooling too. <laughs> So it's working. Yeah, shoot. All right, that would be the next circle. It's gonna be this next pattern. Hundred millimeter circle. Oh, cool. I mean, for 130 bucks. Ethernet, too. Yeah, Ethernet's the way to go. I mean, if you're going to do anything with the Linux CNC, Mach 3, Centroid, whatever, it should be Ethernet. Yeah, USB is just definitely, it's too many issues with USB. At least on something like this, where it's my, on my small machine, you know, my little Mach 3, that my starter one I learned on, um, works fine with the USB. It's weird. I don't know. All right. Next height. <laughs> Cool, I run. Alright, awesome guys. Cool. Link down below if you want.